give our praise today. Thank you, God, that you are always fighting for us, that you heal us, that you deliver us, and that you set us free. God, thank you that you are always faithful to us. Lord, that you never leave us and you never forsake us. You never leave us on our own. You always, always go with us. And we thank you for that today. Standing on this mountaintop, looking just how far we've come, knowing that for every step,
all over the house today. We worship you. We lift you up. We thank you, God, for your grace that you breathe into us. Lord, by your acts and by your miracles, Lord, you create praise on our lips by the things that you do for us. God, we offer that up to you today. We offer up our praise to you. You're worthy. Thank you for being faithful to us. Oh, we love you today. We worship you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Aren't you so glad that he's faithful to us? Will you continue to worship with the choir?
she was coming to do this today. I feel so strongly, though, God, is, the Lord is in the house. And I just asked her to testify about the faithfulness of God. They've had a miracle, another miracle in their family. We've been singing about faithfulness about three songs in a row now. And um, as many of you know, we, um, we've been very um, quiet about it because we just that's just our way. But Tony's dad's been battling lung cancer. Um, we found out in late July that he had lung cancer. And then um, not long after that, we found out it had spread to his lymph nodes and to his brain. And um, one particular set of doctors wasn't giving us a whole lot of hope. And so, you know, we just believed and we moved to a different set of doctors. And they started in September, you know, really hitting it hard with several drugs. And, you know, there have been just, it's just been amazing. Tony's dad's 81, 82. He has not been sick, three, two types of chemotherapy, and he has not been sick the whole time. He has been bathed in prayer. The Lord has been with him. Um, he's been with all of us. And then we got December 17th, we got the news that the tumor, well, they had done radiation to the one in his head, and it's gone. Um, the places in his lymph nodes and in other parts of his body are gone. The huge... The huge tumor that's in his left lung that we were told was about a little bit bigger than a golf ball. I mean, it was very large. is basically dead. Um, it is not growing at all anymore. It is dead or dying. Um, he goes back in March to see about having surgery to get that removed. But we were told right before Christmas that for all intents and purposes, all the cancer in his body is dead. So, praise the Lord. <laughs> Can we give God some praise in this house? He's worthy and he is faithful.
faithful to ways that you have never even dreamed of before. When you get to the point in your life where you'll press through the crowd just to simply touch the hem of my garment, then you'll know and realize that all the things that you've asked for are within your grasp, said the Lord. For I am a God who loves you and longs to have you close to me. But you have to long to be close to me. For I knew the woman was crumbing through the crowd. I didn't know whether she had the desire to make it. But she did, saith the Lord. And it's an example for you that if you'll press on and press through, then I will be faithful to meet that need in your life, saith the Lord. For I do know what you have need of, saith the Lord. But the choice is yours. Will you sit idly by, or will you press in and press towards me? Will you worship me with an everlasting worship and a love that comes from the depth of your being, not just a desire to have your need met, but a desire to know me in my power, to know me in my love and my mercy and my sincerity? For I am with you, saith the Lord, and I am in your midst. But the choice from here comes yours. Holy Ghost said the choice is ours whether we will press through or not. While we have this moment, if you have a need in your life, would you press through, come this way and allow the Lord to do that work in you? Maybe you're here today and you're questioning the faithfulness of God. Would you press your way? And let him do that work in you. Father God, right now, this window, this moment, is given to us. I don't know where everyone is walking today. I don't know what everyone is facing or dealing with today. Sometimes, Lord, it's... it's uh, we're so used to having everything handed to us. We drive up to a window and our food's handed to us. And yet, Lord, what you're saying today is, Lord, you already know what we need. You already know how this is going to turn out. But what you need are for us to press from where we are, to move through the crowd, to push to the sides, and to get to where you are. Make that effort to get down on our knees if we have to and touch the fringe of your garment if we have to so that we can touch you today. Lord, I heard the Holy Ghost say we need to press through not because we want you to meet a need, but just because we want to worship you. Lord, there may be people in this room today who don't have a need, but they want to press in today. Move on us right now in the name of Jesus. Come on. Come on, if you just want to press in today, not a, not a need necessarily, but not because you need something, but just because.
someone whisper in my ear that in the spirit they saw in the choir that there were burdens and, and maybe even disease and sickness that you've not turned loose so that you can sing that song in all the fullness that you'd like to sing it. If you have sickness or burden or disease or anything that you're dealing with. Sometimes we feel so 
uh, so needed to lead in worship that we sometimes may not step out ourselves. So if you're a musician or, or a singer, someone working on a camera or a, or a, or a sound or a, or a computer, this is a good moment in time to press through for yourself. In the name of Jesus, maybe you didn't come this morning. But you'd like to, to say, you know what, I don't want to miss this moment. I want to miss this opportunity. We got time. This is what Jesus came to, to do. This is what Jesus died for. This is, this is what He came to do. He came to, to save us. But He was also strapped on His back to heal us. He's concerned about us when we're discouraged or when we're down or, or when, when we're burdened. He said, cast all you care upon Him for He cares for you. So this morning, maybe what we called for earlier was not what you needed. It doesn't matter what it is. Would you allow the Lord as you press through to do that in your life today? He's faithful. He is faithful. Can we sing it one more time? Maybe as we're singing. If you happen to be up here or out there, we're not trying to prolong. And if the Lord is done with this part, we'll move on. But I don't want to miss someone who may need to press through this morning. Sing it again. He will be faithful to the end. He will provide time and time again. And He will be faithful. physical 
There's also uh, people that need to be saved today. And uh, Cindy wanted to, to give a praise report, but then tell you what the Lord said about, about if, I can, if I can heal, what else that I can do? Could, can we trust Him for other things? I know that all of us have solved the little, the name on the prayer list, Destiny Letter. It's just been on there for over a year. And I didn't uh, anticipate my daughter being in here with us today, but she's in here. She goes to school with, De with uh, Caitlin, our daughter. Destiny's the little 11-year-old girl that goes to school up there at Holly Springs where we live. October a year ago, she was diagnosed with sinus cancer. And they gave family 10% chance of her surviving. And we all in the community started putting her name on prayer list and everybody started praying. And her parents did the same as up here. I went in to Daughter General one day where her mama works and I told her mama, I said, God told me to tell you to take Destiny to Dr. Weir. And she took her and Dr. Weir said, we can do surgery. We can change hospitals. We can do this. And long story short, she has been through a humongous battle. But she is, uh, went from having her esophagus totally raw and pouring blood from her mouth, her nose, her ears, and being so weak that they told her that even if she survives it, she'll have to go to rehabilitation for six months up to a year to even get to where she can walk and have a normal life. Well, uh, two weeks before Christmas, Kayla come home from school and said, Mama, guess who was at school today? She said, Destiny's back. And, and right before Christmas, we went to court with our son who's battling drug addictions. And I told the judge, I said, would you please take into consideration his addiction and not just order him to pay a fine? Would you please give him some time in jail? And he's in jail. He, God spoke to me back there and said, you can trust me with healing. With those that have physical disease, why can't you let go and trust me with those that have diseases of other kinds and let me show you how faithful I can be? He's faithful in every circumstance today. You could be battling some kind of... Uh, He said he keeps every one of his promises. Be healed. Be delivered. Be set free. So what the Holy Ghost said. This morning, this is the right time. This is the right place. Come on in the name of Jesus. Tell you what, why don't we all stand just for a moment? Can we do it in reverence to his presence? This does two things. Number one, it gives you an opportunity to reverence him. Number two, it gives an opportunity for anybody who may want to step out from where they are. To get by you more easily. Come on, he's faithful. 
What He wants to do today is for you to meet Him. He wants you to meet Him. But you're going to have to move from where you are. He wants you to press through. Move. Come on in the name of Jesus. If you're struggling with some addiction, you're struggling with some, you're battling with some, some issue. Come on in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. This morning I wanted to preach to you about having a passion for revival. Second Chronicles seven fourteen says, "If my people, which are called by my name, shall humble themselves and pray, seek my face, turn from their wicked ways, repent." Maybe, maybe a part of what the Lord is trying to do this morning and making us press our way is that sometimes to press our way to Him, we we get a, a better glimpse of how we are. What we are. Maybe, maybe what he's wanting us to do is to see ourselves. Maybe we've gotten so used to our infirmity that we've just assumed that's the way we're supposed to be. But you're seeing yourself as you are. God's seeing you healed. You're seeing yourself bound. You're always going to be bound. God sees you delivered. Come on. Some of you, some of you may see yourself as always burdened, but he sees you free. See yourself as he sees you this morning. See yourself how you can be when He's done working in your life today. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Can we sing just as I am? I know that's old. E flat. Just as I am without one plea but that thy blood was good shed for me and that thou bids he's bidding us to come to him oh lamb tell him lamb of god I come this morning. I come. Sing that first verse again. Just as I am without one plea, but that thy blood wash it for me and that thou bidst me come to thee O Lamb of God I come
surrender all. I surrender all to the my blessed Savior. I surrender. that the Lord can um, touch a child's eyes, physical eyes. There was a lady that Brother Danny just prayed for. She's trying to adopt a child. The child has some problems with the child's eyes. She's gone across the street to get the child to bring it over here. We need to pray that the Lord will make a way for her to adopt the child and for the child's eyes be made whole and well. I wish, I wish uh, Tony and uh, Nancy, she's still here. They understand about two things. They understand that God can give teeth where there have been no teeth. And God can make a way for other things. If you have faith to believe in the power of God, the supernatural, Y'all don't sound too excited about the supernatural today. You believe God has the power to do the supernatural. To do the incredible. Listen. If we're going to have passion for revival. Revival is not just pancakey. It's not just a little pat your hand and, and enjoy a little bit. And have little goosebumps and go home. Revival puts us in a state of mind where we are spiritual, where we are supernatural, where we operate in what God has invested in us, given us, poured into us. He literally gave us the power of the Holy Ghost because His intention was for us to lay hands upon the sick and for them to recover. Come on!
Just lift your hands up this direction, would you? Do you think the Lord honors the faith of a child? These good folk go to church. As she said this morning, the little girl said, the Lord said to go to the church with a steeple. They're here by faith today. God's going to honor this little child's faith. thinketh in his heart, so is he, I said. We need to believe, saith the Lord. We can believe for one another. I also told you to pray ye one for another that ye may be healed. Pray ye one for another this day, saith the Lord. And I'll do a mighty work in your midst. I will do a work that you will not believe. I think, I think the Lord is doing a, a multitude of things here today. Number one, he's, He is sending songs with a vivid message. Number two, the Holy Ghost is speaking directly to the church. Number three, He's allowing individuals to testify of what God has already done so your faith can be built to believe and to trust Every word that's being spoken. Brother Frank Patterson was standing up here. When the choir was having their dress rehearsal for their, their musical, I got a phone call from Sister Lib. I moved from the front row. I went to the back and began to talk to her. He was having 
a major problem with his heart. He didn't want to go. He has trouble with, with sugar and going into like comas. But this was, this was tremendous pain in his chest. And they wanted me to gather people for prayer. Well, there were some guys who were going to be some wise men. And I grabbed them and we went back in the cloakroom and we huddled together and we prayed. This is what Brother Frank just said. I don't know what time it was when you started praying. But whatever time that was, whatever was happening to me has been moved off of me. And I've not had another issue with this up here. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We're not done yet, so don't get nervous. <laughs> Hallelujah. Pastor Terry was with me September the 27th when Larry went in to have gallbladder surgery for the first the last four hours. We were supposed to be back home. It ended up being six days. But when the doctor came, <coughs> he, he called me in and he said, where's that friend of yours? that was with you. And I said, that's my pastor. He said, you need to go get him. And he began to tell us that Larry was very critical. They had had to, he started bleeding extensively when they went to remove his gallbladder. They had to cut him open. And uh, so fix the bleeding, sew him back up. They could not take his uh, gallbladder out. And he said, do you understand me? I'm telling you, he is at end stage with his liver. He may not last 24 hours. We may have to fly him to Charleston if he begins to bleed again. We think he's going to have to have a liver transplant. Well, he kept looking at me and he kept saying, I don't think you understand what I'm telling you. He has an aid, he has a... 15% chance of dying. He said when he comes out, he may be in intensive care. Well, I told him, I said, Larry has had three cancer surgeries. I don't think God is going to take him out with a liver. But we went to, he sent us to Charleston. The doctor was not one of our regular doctors, and he called our house two or three times a week just checking on Mr. Trotter to see how he was. And every time he'd call, I'd tell him, hey, he's, he's, he's okay, he's all right, we're going. We went November the 4th and saw the liver specialist at MUSC. And he looked at Larry and he said, your liver's working. We went back <laughs> November the 18th and the 19th and had three different series of tests. And he called, they called Larry the 31st and said, he told him when we were there, he looked at him, he said, you may have some problems. We're going to do some tests and we're going to see what's going on. But he had a biopsy on the 18th. He had an EGD on the 19th and he had MRI. And they called us the 31st and they told Larry, well, it's not as bad as we thought. We, we saw two spots. We saw two spots. Larry said, I knew about those over a year ago. Mm -hmm. We go back down the fourth, the third and fourth, to see that doctor and also see the cancer doctor. It's been six months since he had his last cancer surgery. But my God has healed his body. Amen. Amen. He has lived a small place. And I know what God can do. All you've got to do is have faith. Amen. God can do it. Amen. He can do anything. Amen. Amen. Get going. <laughs> uh, uh, uh. 
I need just a little more Jesus. Sorry. Well, I need just a little more Jesus. Well, I need just a little more Jesus to help me along the way. Say you need, you need just a little more Jesus. Well, you need just a little more Jesus. Just a little more Jesus. We need just a little more Jesus. We need just a little more Jesus. We need just a little more Jesus. To help us along the way. I need, I need just a little more Jesus. I need just a little more Jesus. Well, I need just a little more Jesus. I need just a little more Jesus. in the fullness of his glory the fullness of his power hallelujah just so you don't leave here today and say we didn't have no word I'm going to give you a word today 1 Kings chapter 18 you find Elijah and the prophets of Baal so I tell you what, go get you some water and pour it over the sacrifice. Go get you some more. Pour it over the sacrifice. Go get you some more and pour it over the sacrifice. The Bible said they did everything they could do to call down fire from heaven, but it didn't work. Then Elijah prayed. Wasn't a very long prayer at all, but he prayed. And he said, I want you to do this so that people will know that you are God. The Bible said, fire came down from heaven. Now I don't know if you call this a revival scripture or not, but I kind of think it is. I kind of think when we try everything that we think will work and everything we think is right and everything we think is good but nothing works. It's when we began to pray so that God will be made known. Not that we'll be made known. Not that our church's name will be made famous. But that God will be made known. Do you want to know why he healed people? So that he could get glory. You want to know why Kay and Larry testified? So that God gets glory. You want to, you want to know why we pray for the sick? So God will get glory. But it don't stop there. You go just another verse or two. And you find Elijah has a word from God. He says, Ahab, you better go get you something to eat. And you better go get you something to drink. Because I think rain is coming. Now you got to understand the way the land was. They were going through a drought. It hadn't rained in a long time. It was dry and it was barren. Do you know that describes a lot of our individual lives? And a lot of churches in America were dry and were barren. But did you know the hope for a drought is when rain will come. When rain will come. So you find Elijah climbs up to the top of Mount Carmel. And he gets down in a position low to the ground. And the Bible says he does something that he just got through doing before. The Bible said he started praying to God. Talking to God. And he would send his servant out. And he said, go tell me what you see. Six times the servant went out. He said, I don't see anything. But the seventh time he came back, he said, I don't know what it means. But I saw a cloud the size of the man's hand. Now I want to tell you what I see. And we're going. There are three reasons why the church doesn't have revival. Number one, we aren't praying for it. We aren't praying. We have prayed for it. But some of us aren't praying for it in you now. It has to be something we pray about all the time or else we're not going to be passionate about it. Amen. Number two, we don't expect it. Amen. Do you understand that the servant went out looking 
And six times he saw nothing. And the truth was, when he saw this thing the size of a man's hand, he wasn't jumping up and down thinking, rain's coming. He said, all I see is a cloud the size of a man's hand. Some of us don't expect to see anything from God when we show up on Sunday. It's time we expect Him to show up. It's time we expect the Holy Ghost to fall. It's time we expect the glory to fall. It's time we expect to meet God when we come in the house. Here's the third reason. We don't recognize it when it shows up. The servant didn't see that that one cloud was the answer to the word God had given. It's not big enough. It's too far out across the water to do us any good. Can I tell you, if God has given you a word, God will bring it to pass. I heard the Holy Ghost say, I have not given one promise that I have not kept or will not keep. If God has given us a word, then we need to pray about it. We need to expect it. And we don't need to discount anything that happens because it may be that that's what God is doing to bring the move of God. Don't discount today. Don't discount what happened today. Don't lose what the Holy Ghost said. Don't lose what happened to you when you moved to the altar. Don't lose what you felt when the choir sang and they were talking about the faithfulness of God and something inside of you was burning. Don't lose that could have been your cloud. I'm telling you, if we'll become passionate for what God said, God has promised us that we would have revival. Don't lose the word that God has given. Don't quit praying about it. Don't quit expecting it to come. And don't discount what you see. Because what you see may very well be the beginning. God is wanting to do. Is that an all right word? Amen. Father God, today you have been in the midst of this place. I know it's strange. Maybe for those who are our guests today who may not be used to this kind of thing. But Father God, everything we've done can be shown can be validated from the word. What has happened today has been a, an operation of the gifts of the Spirit. We have had the gift of tongues and interpretation. Where, where someone spoke in a language they had never learned, but they were moved on by the Holy Ghost and spoke that unlearned language. And so that we could fully understand it, the Holy Ghost gave someone the interpretation of that. They've not learned how to interpret some language they've never known. It, it is directed from the throne room of God. And so they speak that word. And what happens is, is we hear from the very throne room of God speaking directly to the church. God, I thank you for that. There are many, many, many places who don't have that functioning in their church, even Pentecostal church. I thank you for people, Lord, who are willing to step out and to give testimony. Who are willing to speak the truth of what you've done in their life. So that they can build the faith of other people. I thank you for that. I thank you Lord for. I thank you Lord for those that have stepped out. And, and pressed their way through the crowd. And that Lord today I believe many were touched by your mighty spirit. I believe people Lord are going to be healed today. I believe those that have harbored guilt or, or burdens or unforgiveness or whatever it was that seemed to be harbored inside of them today, they've let it go. They've, they've ceased to carry it with them. They're going to walk out of here lighter today because they've left those things at the altar. I believe, God, that you're going to heal eyes and, and make adoptions go through. <laughs> I believe, Lord, even people that 
didn't move to the altar, but Lord, in their seat, in their pew, wherever they were, they prayed something, Lord. They've been praying for a while and they haven't let anybody know it because they, they were afraid, Lord, if it doesn't come to pass, it's going to look. But Lord, I believe you heard them where they were and that, Lord, you're going to give them the confirmation that the word they gave, that you gave to them, is going to come to pass. I believe, God, that as our church becomes passionate about God, about you, about the church, not just the building, but, Lord, what you've called us to do as the body of Christ. And as we become passionate about revival, the renewal, the refreshing, the coming to life again, that those things are going to drive us and propel us to be the church that you have envisioned for us to be. Father God, would you go with us? Would you, would you walk with us? Lord, would you allow what's happened to us today to keep on working in us even after we leave this room? Would you do it today? God, would you glorify, bless, exalt your name today? Would you help us, Lord, to make sure we bless, glorify, and exalt your name today? God, we love you. We worship you. Bless you today. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We're going to ask our ushers if they won't mind just to stand at the door. I don't want to do anything that disrupts or, or, uh, or, or alters this kind of mood that we're having today. Maybe what you need to do is to, is to before you go, if there's someone around you, pray the Holy Ghost. The last thing the Holy Ghost said is pray one for another might be good before you go just to get with some brother or sister. Maybe somebody gave a testimony that's sparked a faith in you and you want to just go to them and say, hey, would you, would you pray with me about my situation, my need today? If you're our guest today, we didn't have an opportunity to greet you like we normally do. We don't apologize for the way the service went. We are sorry we didn't get a chance to shake your hand or, or to meet you today. But we want you to know you're so welcome to be here anytime. Come again. We want you to. We love you and are grateful that you came this way and we pray the service has been a blessing to you. We're going to be dismissed and as we do, if you have a gift you'd like to put in the plate, the tithes or offerings, the ushers will be at the door. You can just put it in the plate as you go out the door. May the Lord bless you and keep you in His tender care, we pray in the name of Jesus.